Did you know that taking too much insulin can actually make your blood sugar run higher? It sounds backwards, right? But here's what happens. You go low, you panic, and then suddenly you're sky high again, right? The roller coaster of blood sugars usually starts with too much insulin. Now your insulin dose might be too high and you wouldn't even know it. The signs are subtle, but the consequences, constant crashes, stubborn highs, even weight gain that's unwanted. See, today I'm breaking down the three overlooked signs that your insulin is working against you, not with you. We're gonna talk about why more insulin doesn't always mean more control, the sneaky mistake that wrecked my energy and mindset, and the adjustment that changed everything for me and for my T1D clients around the world. Now, if you've ever felt stuck in that spike crash cycle, drop the word insulin in the comments. Check the link in the description for my free blood sugar formulas training. Now, let's get into today's topic though. For years, I thought the answer to every high blood sugar was simple. Take more insulin, right? Every spike felt like failure, felt like I was pushing myself towards complications, and every correction of insulin that I gave felt like an attempt to fix myself because I knew my endo was gonna judge me for it at the next appointment that we had. But no matter how much I adjusted, my numbers were all over the place. Highs that made no sense, fatigue that never lifted, and lows that left me terrified. Shook me to my core. What I eventually learned is that I wasn't underdosing, I was misreading what my body was trying to tell me. What if your highs aren't actually from not enough insulin, but from your body signaling that something else is off, something is imbalanced. Maybe your stress is up, maybe you didn't sleep, maybe your meal is different than you thought. Sure, more insulin can help duct tape your blood sugars back together now, but without getting to the root cause, this issue is only gonna get worse over time. So let's take some time and explore this. All right, so question number one, are you taking too much insulin? This is a good question to just self-assessment right now. Here's a quick reality check. If you constantly have to snack just to prevent lows, you might be feeding your insulin uh, instead of fueling your body, right? You think about the insulin forcing you to constantly snack or overeat. It's because there's too much of it in circulation. That's one of the biggest clues that you're taking way too much. Okay, you, you, you can even test this safely, honestly. And this isn't medical advice, obviously, but skip a meal and watch what happens. It could be as simple as that, right? If your blood sugar drops sharply, even without food, your basal dose, especially if you didn't take any fast acting insulin, so your basal dose or your long acting, for those of you who are on injections, may be higher than you need if your blood sugars drop when you skip a meal. Okay, years ago, older insulins required us to eat on a schedule. That's why so many of us grew up hearing you can't skip a meal, you'll go low, right? And unfortunately, I still have family and friends who are like, oh, Matt has to eat because he's diabetic. I'm like, I don't have to eat. I want to, but <laughs> I don't have to. I'm going to, right? They're, they're meant with the new insulins. They're meant to adapt. Modern insulins are flexible. You're not forced to eat when you're not hungry. So that's the good news, right? So if you're still eating to keep up with your insulin, it's time to question who's really in control. Now, question number two for you. Can you take too much insulin even if your blood sugars need it? Absolutely, but big caveats here. And here's where the science gets really fascinating. We have this insulin resistance paradox. When insulin levels stay high for too long, your body starts tuning it out. Your cells literally stop listening. Insulin receptors become less sensitive and glucose transporters called GLUT4 don't move glucose into your cells as efficiently. So you take more insulin, but it works less. It's like shouting louder in a noisy room. Eventually, nobody hears you. You just blend in, right? There's another loud noise in the room. So studies show that chronic high insulin exposure can reduce receptor sensitivity by as much as 40%. That's one of the hidden reasons why some people see both more insulin use and more stubborn highs at the same time. Now, here's the twist. Insulin fixes today's high. You take more, it does work, right? But if we rely on it only as our main lever, it can quietly create tomorrow's imbalance. So let's talk about some root causes. Okay, like, like what, what might your body be trying to tell you? So instead of asking how much insulin do I need, start asking why does my body need this much right now? 
And, and oftentimes you'll find a pretty quick answer. Oh, I forgot to pre-bolus, right? Or, oh, I'm eating more carbs than I thought I was going to eat. Sure, there is that as well. But you really got to take a second, step back and get curious. Why does my body need this much right now, especially if it's outside of your norm? Okay, that's what I want you to think about. If this does not match your normal, if this is an outlier, if you're thinking to yourself, huh, I don't usually give this much insulin. That's the ding, ding, ding. That's the light to start asking yourself this question. Why does my body need this much insulin right now, this time? What makes today different? Sometimes it's not about insulin at all. It's about what's driving the imbalance beneath the surface. So when you hear me talk about that, you're probably getting curious about this. I hope that's the, the desire is for you to get curious because there are a number of things that can make your insulin needs go up. In fact, I talk about this all over my best-selling book, The Blood Sugar Freedom Formula. I'll link it up here for you. Specifically, I want to say it was chapter seven that I go deep into this one. But let's talk about what can make insulin needs go up. Sleep. One night of bad sleep can drop insulin sensitivity by 20%. Some studies suggest up to 40%. Number two, stress. Cortisol raises glucose and blocks insulin from doing its job, makes you more insulin resistant. Number three, nutrition. Processed foods and constant snacking keep glucose elevated all day long and make it more difficult to manage. Number four, exercise. Muscle is your largest glucose sponge. When you move, you make insulin's job easier. In fact, muscle can actually absorb glucose like a sponge without insulin. So independently of insulin, muscles will actually soak up glucose from your bloodstream if there was a recent workout. Pretty cool, right? So the issue is when you stop exercising, you stop getting that benefit, right? So when you don't exercise, your blood sugars actually get harder to manage. Number five, hydration. Even mild dehydration concentrates glucose in your bloodstream because your blood is literally thicker when you're dehydrated. It's like syrup, right? It's less diluted. So when you drink more water, your blood gets more diluted. Number six, weight and body composition. Excess visceral fat increases inflammatory signals that make your cells less responsive. So each of these factors just change, really. It does truly change how your body hears the insulin's message. So if you are chasing numbers that won't stabilize, your body might be asking for rest, movement, water, or calming down, right? And not necessarily just more insulin. So I'll tell you a story, and we'll call this mislabeling the problem. All right, when I was first diagnosed, my endocrinologist started on me injections. So Lantus uh, for long acting, I was on Humalog for meals, pretty common combination, right? Months went by, I went back because I kept noticing these delayed highs between meals. It wasn't right after eating, it was many hours later. So I went back to my endocrinologist and asked her for a quick solution. It's like, hey, what do I do, doc, right? And she was like, oh, you should increase your Lantus because the highs weren't right after eating. So she figured the problem must be my background insulin, my long acting insulin, right? And if you're on a pump, this is your basal insulin. Now, Lantus was a once a day shot. Once it's in, you can't take it back, right? So I followed her advice, doctor's orders, right? And uh, I increased the dose. And what happened? Overnight lows. Every night at two o'clock in the morning, I'd wake up drenched in sweat, disoriented, terrified, honestly. It's like, what's going on? I started eating a snack before bed to protect myself from these lows because they felt terrible. And I began literally feeding my insulin as part of my routine because I didn't know any better. And it took me years, not my doctor, but me, it took me years to realize what was really happening because they didn't help. They couldn't figure it out. My highs between meals weren't because I needed more long acting insulin. They were because I wasn't dosing properly for proteins and fats. So protein converts to glucose at a rate of about 50% through a process called gluconeogenesis. We'll get into that in other videos so you can keep watching on our channel, right? But ultimately protein does convert into glucose, it just takes a lot longer. Now, fat doesn't raise glucose directly, but it does slow down digestion of the carbs, which can separate it from the meal time and make it look detached, but it also can make you more insulin resistant to the carbs that you eat and the insulin that you take, of course. So those meals with steak or avocado or peanut butter, they were raising glucose hours later, masking itself as a basal or a long acting issue 
when it truly was a meal dosing equation imbalance. I didn't need more Atlantis. I needed better timed Humalog. Because when we mislabel the problem, we solve the wrong thing and create a new problem. And that's the danger of chasing numbers without understanding the cause. It puts you in a position of chasing your blood sugars forever. Once I corrected the labeling, I stopped needing midnight snacks. I finally slept through the night with stable numbers. And if you're stuck feeding your insulin, or you're noticing this pattern where you feel like you have to, or you're seeing delayed highs, it might not be your dose. It might be your timing or your nutrition, right? And if you want help personalizing your blood sugar formula, there's a link in the description. Uh, you can connect with us and I'll also put one on screen for you here as well. Free training. I want you to win. I want you to have stable blood sugars because it really does change your entire life when blood sugars cooperate. Let's expand that idea of mislabeling though. So high blood sugars are messages, not verdicts. Every spike has a story. And if we read it wrong, we apply the wrong fix. So sometimes a high is about hormones. Sometimes it's dehydration. Sometimes it's your liver releasing stored glucose after a stressful day. Other times it's sleep deprivation, a hidden infection, or even the tail end of a workout, right? When the stress hormones are still high. If all we ever do is add more insulin, we silence the message instead of understanding it. See, insulin is the microphone. It amplifies what's already happening inside your body. So the next time you see a number that frustrates you, I want you to pause. I want you to ask, what is this trying to tell me? Use your blood sugars as a breadcrumb trail leaving clues to decipher. See, that mindset shift alone can save you hundreds of unnecessary corrections and give you back control over your energy and your life. See, it wasn't that I was taking too much insulin. I was solving for the wrong problem. I actually needed more insulin, but not in long acting or basal. I needed it for my fats and proteins, right? And when I started asking better questions, my whole life changed. My numbers stabilized, my sleep improved, my workouts felt stronger, and my confidence came back. Because the goal isn't less insulin. The goal is smarter insulin. Personalized to your body's needs, aka with a blood sugar formula, like what I teach in our programs and in my number one best-selling book, The Blood Sugar Freedom Formula. I'll link that up here as well. When you balance the levers, sleep, stress, nutrition, hydration, and movement, your insulin needs naturally fall into place. And then this goes in both directions. You can actually manipulate your insulin needs day to day when you fully grasp this concept with your blood sugar formulas. That's real control, which enables true freedom. Now, I want to tackle a few common misconceptions real quick. So myth number one, you have to eat on time. Not true. Your insulin should fit your lifestyle and not the other way around. Myth number two, more insulin always means more control and a lower A1C. No, it can mean your sensitivity is dropping, AKA your resistance is rising and it needs to be fine tuned. Myth number three, highs are always from food. They come from stress, counter regulatory hormones, or even de dehydration. They can come from food, but not always, All right? There's a, a number of things that can knock blood sugars high. Now, if any of those surprised you, let me know which comments which ones you have in the comments and, and which one hit home. Because there are a number of things that can make blood sugars go up or down. So, are you taking too much insulin? Maybe. But the better question is, are you mislabeling what's really going on? Every blood sugar exists for a reason. And there are over 50 plus reasons that blood sugars go up and or down. Insulin is a life-saving tool but it's not the whole toolbox. Use it wisely, listen to what your numbers are trying to tell you, and you'll find the balance between correlation and causation to get true understanding. And if you want the deep dive, grab the free blood sugar formula training through the link in the description. I'll put it here as well. You'll find that blood sugars have a lot more going on. And this is the same stuff we go into in my book as well. It's packed with everything we've talked about today in more depth. More insulin does have its place in fixing blood sugars, but it's how much more when it's given and strategically how it's introduced that will define whether it's a good thing or something that lands you in the hospital. I'll give you a hint. I've personally made that mistake more than once. 
I talk about it in my other episodes. So thanks for watching, for hanging out, for caring about your health, and for doing the hard work it takes to live strong with type 1 diabetes. I'll see you in the next episode where we'll get to explore the hidden hormone that can ruin morning numbers and how to fix it before breakfast. There go my blood sugars. I think I'm currently low. I'm at 70 right now. We're okay. I want you to tap that and watch the next video right now, and I hope you keep up the fight. We'll see you in the next one right there. Have a great rest of your day.